on on miracles miracle a phenomenon defying what's natural for many reasons many people take an automatic position of denying even the possibility of miracles in this article i will share some of my thoughts on the topic and perhaps will give you a new perspective and a new way to look at the world around you nature the forgotten miracle the definition of nature and miracle are intertwined and have a very close relation and oftentimes they are viewed as opposites so let's take a closer look at what is natural. And more importantly, why is it so? Nature is a general term that refers to all phenomena happening around us. When we look closer, we see that all of those phenomena follow set patterns, specific inputs result in specific outputs, which we define as law. Everything around us is governed by these laws, the laws of nature. The law of nature, how it governs everything around us, and how absolute and consistent it isis what causes many people to take an opposing stance from the possibility of miracles. After all, how can such absolute laws be broken as the definition of miracle suggests? Why laws of nature? The question that's more important is why is it so? Why do these laws even exist? Who made them and who chose those specific laws instead of all the other possibilities? And who is enforcing these laws? Who is making them absolute so that not even a single atom can defy it in this unimaginably massive universe? Why is it so? It's the mark of a rational mind to question that which didn't have to be. The laws of nature didn't have to be the way they are. They didn't have to be at all. Why is there a law? Why these sets of specific laws? That's the most important question. And if we are talking about miracles, doesn't that fit the description? Nature is nothing short of a miracle. The Forgotten Miracle People often refer to the unexpected phenomena such as major calamities, tsunamis, hurricanes, typhoons, and volcanic eruptions as acts of God. This is how they also think of miracles. Their way of thinking is that when something massive and unexpected or defying nature happens, it's a clear and undisputed sign of God. But I think that this definition for an act of God is a bit narrow. On miracles, new aspect of seeing God's actions. Some people only see God when something unexpected happens. But if you reflected more and thought about everything in nature, you will see acts of God all around you. You will see it in the gentle breeze moving the leaves of a tree or tingling the grass. You will see it in your sitting on your chair drinking your hot drink and enjoying it. Also, you will see it in water flowing. You will see it in how mountains were formed and how the sky rains. You will see it in everything around you. The more you think of nature, the more you will recognize the magnificence standing behind it and making it as it is. The more you know nature, the more you know Allah, only one God, the one who made it so. Thus, those who raise an eyebrow when they hear the major calamities called acts of God only do so because they have never looked at the full picture before. And the same is for those who think it is impossible for miracles to happen. It's only because they haven't thought or realized that miracles are already everywhere around them. Miracles were never the main argument to believe in Allah. Instead, they were the arguments to believe his messengers. Be it the split of the sea, the moon or even being unharmed when thrown into a great fire. These are all mainly signs for his messengers and also his absolute power. But no believer was ever waiting to see those signs to believe in him, because the miracles we already see is as equal if not more evident of him than those miracles. After all, the miracle of the sea in front of our eyes is as much a miracle and a sign of him as it split. The miracle of the moon in front of our eyes is as much a miracle and a sign of him as it split. The miracle of the burning fire in front of our eyes is as much a miracle and a sign of him as the cold and safe one. Miracle of our own birth and life is as much of a miracle and a sign of him as it is the second one. In short, those who ignorantly deny God rarely come to realize that a universe without God is a universe without law. Relation between God and nature God and nature are not opposite sides to choose from, he made nature and he is holding it. Everything in it is ultimately from him. God is a natural conclusion from nature, not in contradiction with it. And as they are his laws, by his will, he can change them as he wills. What is there to frown about when it comes to miracles? The one who made nature, the forgotten miracle, can change it into any other as he wills. 
Value of Testimony Moreover, testimony is one of the three basic tools we use to acquire knowledge. Together with the senses and rationality, testimony comes to tie up all the individual human knowledge together into one greater unit. Testimony is the ability to pass on knowledge from one person to the other, making it the widest door for knowledge. With that, the room for errors and mistakes is also wide, but this simply means we need to put more effort into filtering the correct from the incorrect. Acquiring knowledge via testimony is essential and indispensable to any human being. Some even say that 8,090% of anything we know is based on testimony. No one can really deny testimony as a means to acquire knowledge. No one can live relying only on his individual knowledge alone. It is simply unfathomable. And as we can differentiate between the correct and incorrect and separate them, there is no need to even think of denying testimonial evidence, all we need to do is simply, properly check and verify. Relation between testimony and miracles Essentially anything related to history can only be acquired via testimony. Our senses are simply too limited, they can't see everything that happened everywhere all the time. But other people see it and they can pass it on to us. Anything that happened before bite a hundred years ago, a day ago or even an hour ago you can know it via testimony. And as miracles are essentially an observed phenomenon, not all can observe them. However, all can know them via the same means as we know everything else. Moreover, it's known that not all testimonies are accurate. The solution to this problem is simple. Validation and verification of the individual testimonial evidence to make sure that it's free of any intentional, dishonest, or unintentional, accidental, errors. After this, it becomes meaningless to dismiss it just on the fact that it's a testimony. After all, the majority of our human knowledge is based on testimonies. And there is no sense in measuring probabilities in this matter. You can't really measure a probability of a testimony being true or false, and you can't measure the probability of miracles occurrence. The latter is based on the cause for its occurrence, which has nothing to do with probability. Instead, it depends on the will of the maker of nature. And the first is simply being lazy on the job of verification for the testimony. Testimony tool in Islam We simply need to put some effort into differentiating between the correct testimonies from the incorrect ones. And no one put more effort into that area more than Muslims did. Make sure to check and read about the whole science made by Muslim scholars centuries ago just for this single matter. All to build their faith on solid grounds as the value of truth is of the highest importance to a Muslim. Conclusion To conclude, rationally, miracles are possible. And if we took a step back and actually looked at nature itself we will realize that it's a miracle of its own. The one who made it so, can easily change it. Of course, this doesn't mean that it is arbitrary and anyone who claims it is right. It is dependent on its cause, the will of the lawmaker. And verifying testimonies, when done properly can be a very good filter to weed out all the lies and delusions, so that we are only left with the truth. Finally, make sure to read more and know more about how Muslim scholars made the ingenious science that preserved all of Islamic tradition and clearly weeded out any faults or mistakes so that the faith is. On clear sight, not blind one. As Allah, God, said in his book. Say, is the blind equivalent to the seeing? Or is darkness equivalent to light? Quran, 1316. Say, O Messenger, to the disbelievers who worship others together with Allah, who is the creator and the controller of the heavens and the earth. Say, O Messenger, it is Allah who is their creator and controller, and you acknowledge this. Say, O Messenger, to them, have you taken for yourselves protectors other than Allah who are themselves helpless? They cannot draw any benefit for themselves nor remove any harm. How then will they be able to do so for others? Say to them, O Messenger, is the disbeliever, who has no insight equal to the believer who can see and who is guided? And is disbelief, which is layers of darkness, equal to faith, which is light? Have they assigned in the creation partners to Allah, may he be glorified, who have created anything like Allah's creation so that their creation is indistinguishable from his? Say to them, O Messenger, Allah alone is the creator of all things. He has no partner in creation. He is the one and only deity, who solely deserves to be worshipped, and he is the all-compelling. A.R.R.A.D. 16 Also 
Say, are those who know and those who do not know equal? Quran, 39, 9. Is one who is obedient to Allah, spending the time at night in prostration to his Lord and standing for him. Fearing the punishment of the afterlife and hoping in the mercy of his Lord better or that disbeliever who worships Allah in hardship but disbelieves in him in ease and ascribes parters with him? O Messenger, say, are those who know what Allah has made obligatory upon them due to their understanding of Allah and those who do not know any of this equal? Only people of sound intelligence recognize the difference between the two. AZ Zummer, 9. Now, what does the article add to you? Share your thoughts with our team.